Howdy folks and welcome back to the World of Tanks patch 9.3 test server with your host for today's review, the Mighty Jingles. Today we're looking at the T-54 lightweight Soviet Tier 8 light tank, one of the three new Tier 8 light tanks introduced into the game. The Germans getting the RU-251, the Americans getting the T-49, and the Russians getting the T-54 lightweight after the LTTB at Tier 7. And the T-54 lightweight is the tank that a lot of Tier 8 medium tank drivers have been crying in their cornflakes about. Why is that, Jingles? Good question. Glad you asked. Allow me to explain. Now, you don't see that many T-54 lightweights on the test server. There's... I don't know what it is. There's something about this tank that just isn't as immediately sexy or fun as the RU-251 or the T-49. Um, you can see why looking at the T-49. It's it's a KV-2 that can do 72.4 kilometers per hour. <laughs> What's not to like about that? Um, it's a very inconsistent, derpy tank, however. You know, with great derp comes the great opportunity to miss every shot that you fire. But that's the price you pay for being able to do 910 damage in one shot. The RU-251, by comparison, is what most people think of when they think of the words light tank. It's very small, it's very fast, it has absolutely no armour whatsoever, and it's got a punchy little 90mm gun. It's a great little light tank. The T-54 lightweight didn't really look like a light tank. Um, and I think that might be why you see so many RU-251s and T-49s, and you don't see that many T-54s. However, it's the fact that this thing didn't really look like a light tank that is what is causing so much concern with Tier 8 medium tank drivers, and it's mostly to do with... Well, it's it's the armour of the T-54 lightweight. There's very little lightweight about the armour of this tank. It's obviously not as good as a fully-fledged Tier 9 T-54, but it's also faster and more manoeuvrable because it's a light tank, and it's almost as good as a fully-fledged Tier 9 T-54. Um, I'm going to flash up Tank Inspector now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to take a quick run through Tank Inspector and just show you what it is about this tank that makes it so special. And it's all to do with the armour. Now, looking at the basic numbers first of all. The front of the hull is 80mm thick on both the upper and the lower glacis. The side of the hull is very flat and is only 60mm thick and the rear is 45mm thick. The top armour on the engine deck is only 15mm. Top of the turret, uh, 20 or 32mm. Ugh, bad. The side armour of the turret, well as you can see there's all kinds of different armour zones here so it's difficult to say how thick the side armour of the tank is. You're looking at getting through either 120, 113, 91 or 80mm of armour. Um, you're probably not going to have many problems penetrating the side of the turret of the T-54 lightweight, but the front of the turret is interesting. And we're seeing on the T-54 lightweight something that Wargaming have been doing a lot lately when they introduce new tank models into the game. Rather than just sticking a, a single solid slab of same thickness armour and saying, right, that's the front of the turret, they're actually giving us layered armour zones. So what we have is the strongest armour on the tank at right at the front of the turret, here, 180mm. And then the further we move towards the side and rear of the turret, the thinner the actual armour gets. So here it's 160, up here it's 135, 113, 120, uh, 91 here, and so on and so on. However, it still works because the further to the side and rear of the front of the turret you get, if that makes any sense, the better the armour angling and sloping becomes. So what it means in practice is if you are staring at the turret front of a T-54 lightweight at typical combat angling, you pretty much have to beat at least 200mm of armour everywhere. At least 200mm. That becomes anything between 240 and 210, depending on where you hit it. This 160 is around 200 at that kind of angle. Over here it's over 200. This 135 millimeters of armour, because of that kind of angling and sloping, is again <laughs> over 200 millimeters. Here at the sides, where it's only 113 millimeters thick, it's a guaranteed ricochet. Down here, where it's only 120 millimeters thick, it's equivalent of 240 millimeters of armour. The uh, 
the front of the hull as well at this kind of angling. Imagine the T-54 lightweight has just popped over a hill. He doesn't have particularly gun depression, uh, sorry, particularly good gun depression. He's got five degrees, which is could be worse. And uh, you take a shot. You're not going to penetrate his turret, so you take a shot at his hull. Well, that 80 millimeters at that kind of angle is the equivalent of 173. And if he's giving you shots at the lower glacis, he's a very bad T-54 lightweight, but even the lower glacis, well, look at that, anything between 150 and 160 millimeters of armor. Don't forget, this is a light tank. <laughs> it's got better armor than the T-44 tier 8 medium tank. Hell, it's got better armor than the, than the Panther 2. <laughs> it's... What the hell is going on with the light tanks in World of Tanks lately? Oh, hang on, Jingles. Better armor than the Panther 2, what are you talking about? I'm not taking that. Well, here we go. Okay, the Panther 2 does technically have... I mean, it's got slightly thicker armor. It's 20 millimeters thicker, and it's sloped the same way. But down here, it's only 60 millimeters thick. And the T-54 lightweight doesn't have no machine gun port weak spot in the front either. <laughs> And the turret of the T-54 lightweight is better than the turret of the Panther II. That's 120mm at the most, and it's flat as a pancake. The T-54 lightweight is a better armoured tank than the Panther II. It, it just is. And it's a light tank. What the hell is going on? So, T-54 lightweight, it's got more or less the same health. In fact, there's only 100 health difference between this tank and the T-44, for example. It's a slightly lighter tank with a more powerful engine, so it's got a better power to weight ratio than the T-44. It's got a better top speed than the T-44, 51 versus 69 kilometers per hour. It turns faster than the T-44. It has functionally better armor than the T-44. Is there no end to this tank's talents? Well, the T-44's turret turns at exactly the same 48 degrees per second as the T-54 lightweight. Is there anything that the T-44 does better than the T-54 lightweight does? Well, sort of. And it's to do with gun performance. But there's not an awful lot in it. If you have a look at the T-44's 100mm LB1 gun, um, they're pretty much exactly the same. The T-54 lightweight has a slightly better rate of fire. They both have exactly the same penetration with all kinds of ammunition. In fact, they both fire the same ammunition. Uh, they both do exactly the same damage, obviously. The T-44's gun is slightly more accurate. 0.35, which isn't bad, versus 0.38, which is not not good at all, really. <laughs> and they both have exactly the same aiming time. So that's it. The T-44 is better than the T-54 lightweight in that it is 0 0.03 better accuracy. Wow. Is it any wonder that people driving this tank or getting very, very upset about this tank. And yet, they're kind of missing the point. It's only really fair to compare the two tanks if they get the same matchmaking, and they don't. This tank regularly gets into games where it has to fight tanks like this. The T-44 doesn't. The T-44 gets into tier 10 games, sure. But it doesn't regularly get into tier 10 games. The T-54 lightweight does. And having functionally better armor than a T-44 doesn't matter when people are shooting back at you with guns that have 250 millimeters of penetration. That's why these tier 8 light tanks have the stats that they do. It's because they have to fight against monsters like this in, you know, to a degree that tanks like the Panther II, the Pershing, and the T-44 don't. But while it's fair to say the Tier 8 medium tank drivers don't really have any direct threat from these new Tier 8 light tanks because their purpose is different, what about the existing Tier 8 light tanks? Tanks like the AMX-1390. Uh, is this tank suffering from power creep with the introduction of tanks like the T-54 lightweight and the RU-251? Well, I don't think so. The 1390 is special. It it's got an autoloader. It's a fast low-profile, sneaky little light tank with a six-shot autoloader. And that autoloader is always going to guarantee 
the AMX 1390 a place at the table. Anytime you see tier 8 competitive play, it's always AMX 1390s and AMX 5100s. The autoloader is what makes this tank unique. Are there any other tier 8 light tanks? They should be feeling very nervous about their future because of the introduction of tanks like the T-54 lightweight. Uh, yeah. There is. The WZ-132. If I drove a WZ-132, I'd be feeling very nervous. Hang on a minute. I do drive a WZ-132. Shit. The thing is, both the T-54 lightweight and the WZ-132 are functionally the same tank. They're both based on the same concept. The T-54 lightweight is a cut-down version of the T-54, as the name suggests. The WZ-132 is a development of the Type 59, which itself is an export version of the T-54. They're, in theory, the same tank, but they're not, because the T-54 lightweight is better than the WZ-132 in almost every respect, particularly armour. The best armour on the WZ-132 is 55mm at the front of the turret. F -f -f 50 watt? <laughs> That's not armour. It's also not as fast as the T-54 lightweight. It has a worse power-to-weight ratio. It does turn slightly faster, 56 versus the 50 degrees per second. Both of their turrets have exactly the same traverse speed. It's got 10 meters better signal range, but it's got 10 meters, sorry, 10 meters better view range, get it right jingles, but it's got 10 meters worse signal range. And the guns are very, very similar, again, with the only real difference being that the, well, it's got a, a better accuracy, same aiming time, slightly better penetration, same damage, significantly worse rate of fire. WZ-132 drivers are the guys that should be and very, very nervous about the future of their tanks, with machines like the T-54 lightweight appearing on the battle. T-44 drivers are missing the point. They don't have to fight the same kind of battles that the T-54 lightweight does. The WZ-132 does fight the same battles that the T-54 lightweight does, and it's not as good a tank. Let's have a look at some games, see what all the fuss is about. This is Dunno Name 12. He plays on the North American server. He's driving his T-54 lightweight on the Northwest map. Obviously, on the test server, it's a tier 9 match. This is going to be standard matchmaking, by the way. In fact, this is going to probably be the best matchmaking you're ever likely to see in a T-54 lightweight. And that's the reason why T-44s, Pershings, Panther 2s have really got nothing to worry about. They're never going to find themselves top tier in a tier 8 match with these things on the enemy team. Tier 9 and 10 matches are the only kind of games that these things get into. If you're driving a T-44 in a tier 9 match, you've got bigger things to worry about than T-54 lightweights, and that's why this thing really isn't a threat to tier 8 mediums. Well, it is going to be a threat to tier 8 mediums, it's a dangerous little tank, but it's, it's not a threat to the livelihood of tier 8 mediums. And this, thing, this thing is for killing tier 9s and 10s. Your tank is for killing tier 8s and 9s and avoiding tier 10s. <laughs> you have different roles on the battlefield. Enemy tanks spotted. He's thinking about going around. And there, do you see that E75 on the hill? He didn't see that E75 on the hill. And that E75 saw him. Slaps a shot right into the side, takes off nearly half of his health. He pops out, sees the opportunity to kill the Lorraine, does get the kill, but gets hit in the flank by a T-49 and should have died there and then. But 152mm howitzer firing high explosive, his tracks ate the damage. And that's exactly why AMX 1390 drivers have absolutely nothing to worry about when they start complaining about power creep from tanks like T-49s. The T-49 is an inconsistent machine. It's fun. Oh, it's fun, but you can never rely on it to do the damage that it needs to do when it needs to do it, in the way that you can with, well, every other tier 8 light tank in the game. You can do things in T-54 lightweights that would be suicide in T-49s, like fighting a corner <laughs> against tanks like STIs and T-54 lightweights when you've got a 20 second reload. Um, so, yeah. 
Now, this T-95 is in serious trouble. Well, he's in trouble. He's been rushed by a whole bunch of light tanks. But he has... Th this is a completely survivable situation. Look, they've just nailed the T-71. There's a Waffentrager Panzer IV here giving him support and fire. And a T-54 lightweight. And an STI. All he has to do to survive this is nothing. Well, he could do nothing and turn the T-95 around. But instead he chooses to... He's actually driving his T-95 backwards into the guns of these enemy tanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! You know, he's, and he's 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 making it harder for his team to help him. <laughs> he still hasn't tried. Oh man, what's going on? Well, he wasn't much use to the team alive. So, and uh, any second now, there we go. He's dead. Well, I say he wasn't any use to the team alive. He did at least keep four enemy tanks occupied, kicking him to death. <laughs> and uh, and now. They're all dead, eventually. I mean, he made it hard work for his team to kill the four tanks who were attacking him, but they managed it, so all's well that ends well. Now, who's next? There goes the E-75. Um, what's that down there? Ooh, it's a big tank. T-54 lightweight is not afraid of big tanks. Has a quick look. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, U-251. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, time for a bit of a strokey beard session while we ponder what to do here. Hmm. Come on, stroke your beards with me while we have a good think about it. The sound effects are important as well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go around, get under the two five one's gun, and this is where we have a bit of a jingles derp moment. <laughs> he was going after the rear of the IS six, and oh look at this. He's now. Oh, that's that's. That's your 15 degrees of gun elevation. That's how bad that is. He was completely helpless against that RU-251. Luckily, the RU-251 was paying absolutely no attention to him, so he got away with it. The 251's dead. He isn't. Oh, took a hit there from... Oh, it's only a walker bulldog. <laughs> T-54 lightweight is not afraid of 76mm gun. Chew on that one, Yankee dog. International Socialism triumphs once more. <laughs> and uh, as quickly as that, and this game did not last very long. The only thing left on the enemy team is a VK4502. Is he gonna get, uh, he's a long way away. Is he gonna get back there in time to actually do some more damage? Well, you'd be surprised. This is a quick tank. 69 kilometers per hour top speed. Good power to weight ratio. Great suspension. He's going to make it. Now, is he actually going to be able to do anything when he gets there? Well, he's switched to his APCR ammunition. One of the major weaknesses of this tank, by the way, is its ammunition capacity. It only carries 37 rounds of ammunition. And with 240 damage per shot, it, there's a hard cap to how much damage you can actually do in a game with this thing. Oh, there's the 4502. He's made it. He's going to get a chance to put some shots into him. Oh, you cheeky German bastard. Guess what? Tracks ate it. Ha ha, sucks to be you. Oh, turret top, turret top. There we go. That's it. Nice, easy target. Oh, slightly more difficult target. 0.38 accuracy. <laughs> no problem, comrade. <laughs> so... Dunno name 12 from the North American server getting a ace tanker and coming top on experience earned in a tier 9 battle on the test server. Didn't really get much of an opportunity to see how effective the armour of this tank is however. Uh, he ate two shots with his tracks, uh, he got hit once by an E75 in the flank, that's obviously going to penetrate, once in the flank by a walker bulldog and that penetrated as well. In the next replay however, you're going to see how the armour of this tank works. This is Serious Threat from the EU server, playing his T-54 lightweight in a tier 10 game on Prokhorovka on the test server. Name like Serious Threat, sounds like he means business. Well, he talks the talk, does he walk the walk? Oh yeah, <laughs> he walks the walk alright. This is a significantly tougher match than the game that Dunno Name 12 just played. For a start, it's tier 10, and secondly, 
The two Tiger 2s on his team are, well, idiots. This team is going to be down three to team killing before the match even gets started. So it's effectively 12 <laughs> versus 15 before we've even started. And that right there, thanks to the angling and the sloping, is the 80mm of frontal hull armour on the upper glacis of the T-54 lightweight bouncing a shot of armour-piercing composite rigid ammunition from a batch at. Oh, the first Tiger has turned blue. They haven't actually team killed anybody yet, but hey, give them time. Oh, I spoke too soon. The Jaegeru has had enough of his shit. He's killed one of the Tiger 2s. Meanwhile, uh, Serious Threats tracks eat a shot from an Object 140. Look at this. Object 140 and a bat chat. They're both focusing their fire on the friendly bat chat and ignoring Serious Threat. Well, you don't ignore a Serious Threat because he's a Serious Threat. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there. <laughs> oh, suddenly a wild IS-4 appears. Well, he takes a hit from one of the tier 10 mediums in front of him, and then, for some unknown reason, this IS-4 decides that the best possible thing he can do in this circumstance is to leave the protection of the hill and drive down in front of the guns of an E-100, a Jagdpanzer E-100, and another IS-4 in order to fail to do any damage whatsoever. <laughs> to uh, Serious Threats T-54 Lightman. You see behaviour like this on the test server all the time, and, and it's because most of the guys in these tier 10 tanks have never driven a tier 10 tank before. Tier 5 is the highest thing they've got, and that's why they come onto the test server to play with tier 10 tanks. And it's why they drive their tier 10 tanks like they drive their M4 Shermans back on the live server. Um, it's nothing really to be surprised about. Meanwhile, in the uh, team killing drama, the second Tiger has uh, team killed an M48 pattern. He's nailed one of the team's tier 10s before the Jagdpanzer E100 could guess at his shit and team kill him as well. So they're down three tanks to team killing. Now, the five degrees of gun depression that the T54 lightweight has is not the worst gun depression of any tank in the game, but it's still not particularly good. And that means that in order to be able to shoot at this bat chat, he has to show the side of his tank to him because he just won't be able to get the gun down far enough over the front of the tank. However, while the Batchat did get two shots at him, only one of them actually did any damage. His tracks ate the second shot. And by placing his shots through the Batchat's inside drive wheel, he was able to not only damage the Batchat, but also keep him immobilised in place long enough for the friendly E100 to finish him off. And any second now... Well, he's just making sure he's out of line of fire of that Death Star. Yep, that was his turret, bouncing a shot of a minimum 128mm calibre from a Rheinbattal Borsig. Death Star's pointing the other way. Well, fine, let's put some fire into him. He's been spotted. There's still some nasty tanks over there on the flank. Object 140 and a 121 over there. Both of them very dangerous tier 10 medium tanks, but he's in a good spot here. He's, uh, he's working the ridge intelligently. He's not giving them anything to shoot at. Put some more fire into the Death Star. E100 comes up, finishes off his kill. He's been spotted again. Ineffective fire into the Object 140. Pops up for another shot. Five degrees of gun depression, not great, but good enough to do that. Object 140 has just been taken out. So the 121 is still over there somewhere. And then it all goes pretty quiet. Um, no contact with any enemy tanks at the moment. Object 140 in a bat chat uh, up to the northeast. There we go, they've spotted the T-57 Heavy. Okay, T-57 Heavy now has medium tank problems. And there's the AMX 50B. The Jagdpanzer E-100 is liable to be up the road behind them. It's, it's really the only place he can be at this point. And, yep, there he is. It was fairly obvious where he was going to be. Serious threat. Guns the engine. Stays in the low ground where he can. And, wow, look at that. <laughs> Three enemy tanks killed in quick succession. He's going to have to... He's going to have to haul ass if he wants to get any more damage done here. He's found the Jaegeru. He's closing in on the Jaegeru. The Jaegeru is completely stuffed. <laughs> <laughs>
He's not even trying. And how would Sir like to die today? T-54 lightweight behind you, or Death Star and T-57 heavy in front of you? Uh, T-57 heavy it is. Excellent choice, sir. <laughs> and as quickly as that, it's game over. So, serious threat, driving a T-54 lightweight in a tier 10 match on Prokhorovka, in which three of his team died to team killing, and he manages to walk away with Ace Tanker, Scout, Confederate, and Tank Sniper. He did 4,000 482 damage of his own, earning 1700 base experience and almost 6000 spotting damage. The armour of this tank, bearing in mind he was getting shot at exclusively by tier 10 tanks, stopped 1070 damage. His tracks ate at least 3 shots from tier 10 tanks. Now before we get too carried away, this does not mean that the T-54 lightweight is an especially well armoured tank in a tier 10 match. It isn't. The armor's good, but it's not that good. You have to make the armor work for you. You have to know what you're doing. You have to understand angling. You have to understand working ridge lines and being able to fire over them using your turret to keep yourself safe. It's not like driving an E75 in a top tier 9 match and just herbert derping around and, and taking the hits because nobody really knows where to shoot you. You still have to know what you're doing when you're driving this tank to make that armour work for you. One of the complaints that I, I keep hearing from light tank drivers is that if they're in a situation where their team fails horribly and it's down to them to carry the match, because they're in a light tank and because they have no armour, it's significantly harder for them to carry that match than if they were driving a medium or a heavy. Yes, they have the speed, yes, they have the manoeuvrability, but sometimes you just need to be able to take a hit and survive in order to carry a game. Something that you can't guarantee being able to do in almost every other light tank in World of Tanks, but something that you can do in the T-54 lightweight. So, how to go about summing up what the T-54 lightweight means to World of Tanks? And, and I think that out of all of the tanks that have been introduced in patch 9.3, the T-54 lightweight is the most significant of them. Because it, it symbolises a change in the way you need to think about light tanks. And, and is exactly, in my opinion anyway, exactly what Wargaming have been talking about when they talked about trying to make the game more interesting for light tank drivers. And what I mean by that is that with the introduction of this tank in particular, Wargaming are now giving light tank drivers more options. They're giving them more things to do than just be scouts in high tier matches. Now, the T-54 Lightweight can still scout in high tier matches. It's perfectly capable of doing it. It's not going to be as good at it as, for example, the RU-251. The RU-251 is more of what people have come to expect of a high tier light tank. Low profile, very, very fast, punchy little gun, highly manoeuvrable, a good scout. Now, the RU-251, much like the AMX 1390, and to a lesser degree the WZ-132, while being good at scouting, does not necessarily mean that they can't fight either. The AMX 1390 in particular has always been a good scout tank and very, very dangerous to tanks of any tier in the latter part of the match. But what we're seeing with the T-54 Lightweight is the complete opposite. A tank that is better at fighting than it is at scouting. And that's given light tank drivers more options. And that's exactly what Wargaming have been trying to do all along with the whole rebalancing of light tanks that we're seeing in patch 9.3. And it has never been more obvious than in a tank like the T-54 Lightweight. This tank is a fighter first and foremost, and it's a scout second. And that's why it has the armor that it has to go with the speed and maneuverability and the gun performance that it has. And that's what makes the T-54 lightweight so different. Light tank drivers who have been sick and tired of being shoehorned into the role of scout in every tier 9 and 10 game they get into, this is the tank you want to go for. As always folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.